Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on the description of programming languages. So here's the outline of uh, this topic. We'll start with the different levels of description of uh, languages in general. Uh, then we'll talk about grammar and syntax. Then about uh, syntactic constraints, what are called uh, contextual syntactic constraints. And we we'll finish uh, this discussion with this topic uh, uh, discussing compilers and the how the the individual phases of compilers. So let's start with the different levels of description. But before we do that, uh, let us just recall what we are actually studying. Of course, we are studying programming languages. And what is a programming language? Well, it is some kind of an artificial formalism in which we can express algorithms. Uh, we looked at earlier uh, abstract machines and uh, how they are uh, connected to uh, programming languages, but now we want to look at how we can describe individual programming languages. And when we study programming languages, we can actually use uh, many of the concepts and tools that have developed in linguistics meaning, well, linguistics in general uh, study natural languages, not programming languages, but we can nevertheless use many of the concepts that have been, and tools that have been uh, developed for studying, uh, or in linguistics, that have been developed in linguistics. So, when we say... Uh, how we can describe programming languages, we really want to discuss what it means to define or understand a programming language and what tools can be used in the undertaking. So if we look at the very uh, different levels of description, we can start with grammar. And uh, in this context, you can just think of uh, uh, the different levels of description of a natural language. Because, ma as we said, many of these levels actually apply also to programming languages. So if we start with grammar, this part of the description of a language uh, has to do with answering questions like which phrases are correct. You know, is the is the grammar of a particular sent does a sentence uh, 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 follow the grammar of the language? So we're basically saying, we're asking the question, which phrases are correct? And the grammar usually is uh, uh, divided into two components: the lexical component, which identifies the sequence of symbols constituting the words or the tokens and the syntax, which describes which sequence of words constitute legal phrases. So we have a lexical com component and we have a, a syntactical component. And this, as we will see later, is also applies to programming languages. So let us just, uh, at the very start, try to understand what we mean by lexical component and the syntac uh, sy syntactical component. Uh, so let me just write here a sentence, an English sentence, uh, a very simple sentence like, I saw the man. Whoops, I saw the man. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to do in, in, in trying to understand the sentence is figuring out what are the individual words or what are the individual tokens as they are called. So in this case, I is a separate uh, token because it uh, it has a particular meaning associated with it. This is the, the, the first person pronoun, I. Saw this three sequence letter 
letter of uh, a word of three letters is another uh, lexical component or a token. V is the third token and man is the fourth token and then we have the period as a separate token as well. Or why is that? Well, because the period uh, is not part of the uh, token that uh, corresponds to the word man. So man, the, the word man or token man has a specific meaning, whereas the token here also has a separate, has a specific meaning which is separate. The token actually constitutes the end of the sentence, right? So, in this particular sentence, we have four tokens. Uh, I saw the man and period. Five tokens. Now, so that's the lexical component. The function of the lexical component <coughs> is to identify the sequence of symbols constituting the words or tokens. Now, the syntax component describes then which sequence of these words constitute legal phrases. So, for example, what are the individual phrases? And if you recall from uh, something that you should have learned in, in uh, grammar in, in earlier years, the man, for example, is a separate phrase, and this is actually called a noun phrase. I saw the man where the is a determiner and man is a noun. I is another phrase, it's actually a noun phrase, which actually just uh, um, constitutes the, the pronoun I, and saw is another phrase, and this is a, this is a verb phrase, which includes only the, the verb saw. So when we're thinking about the syntax, we are thinking about how the individual tokens are organized into legal phrases. Now, another level of description is the semantics. And this part seeks to answer the question, what does a correct phrase mean? So, in our case, I saw the man, this, the syntax component, would try to to, uh, to answer uh, the question, what, did this, what's, what does this sequence of uh, words or phrases actually mean? Well, in this case, it means that I saw someone, and I saw, uh, in this case, uh, a man, or the man. Now, meaning in natural languages can actually be very complex, because uh, uh, in some cases it can be ambiguous. A particular sentence could actually uh, have different meanings. While in the case of artificial languages like programming languages, the situation is much simpler. In, in programming languages, well, programming languages are actually um, designed not to be ambiguous. Because uh, if they were ambiguous, we could, could not produce one single correct code for the underlying program. So, programming languages really have to be unambiguous. Whereas uh, the meaning in natural languages uh, can in some cases be uh, ambiguous. Now, just to give you one example, Uh, to give you one example, I'll add to the sentence, I saw the man with binoculars. Now, the question is, what is the meaning of this sentence? Um, am I holding binoculars uh, and seeing a man or the man, or am I seeing a man which is holding binoculars. So there are at least two different meanings here. So the meaning of this sentence is ambiguous. And we would have to try to disambiguate it according to the context in which it appears. 
So this often happens in natural languages. Uh, but as I said earlier, we don't want this to happen for programming languages because they have to be unambiguous for us to be able to uh, produce the correct code for it. Uh, so what is the, in general the meaning of uh, uh, program languages? Well, for example, the meaning of a certain program could be the mathematical function computed by that program. Uh, and the meaning of individual statements would have to be uh, uh, expressed in some kind of uh, uh, specification for that particular language. And there are, there are other ways to to express the meaning of uh, uh, individual statements, and in, in the, uh, those, uh, one way would be used to would be to use some kind of a um, language to express the meaning, uh, like uh, operational semantics, and this is actually something that we will uh, cover later. Now the next level of description, having talked about uh, the, the, the grammar and the semantics, is pragmatics. And in natural languages, uh, that part of the language description asks, how do we use a meaningful sentence? Because sentences with uh, the same meaning can indeed be used in different ways by different users. Uh, and, and in this case it's the context that really requires us to use different sentences. Some sentences are more elegant, some uh, are uh, antiquated uh, uh, or more dialect based than others and it depends on the exact context which uh, uh, usage is appropriate for, for the given sentence. Sometimes we want to be more formal and we use more formal language, in, uh, especially when we're writing stuff. Uh, when we are um, speaking, we usually use more informal language. So that is the part uh, of uh, uh, the function of prag pragmatics to discuss or ask or, or asking questions of how do we use sentences in different or how do we use language in different contexts? And this is especially an issue for natural languages. Now, then we have one more level of description, the implementation. But note that this part only exists for programming languages, but not for natural languages. I mean, we are not implementing a natural language. We don't have to produce any code for a natural language. Uh, we don't have to execute the natural language. Uh, the execution is, uh, uh, we might say the execution is really uh, happens when we read sentences or when we speak. That's the execution part. But this, uh, this level really exists for programming languages because a programming language is an artificial language and we have to be able to run uh, our programs on a particular machine. So the implementation parts needs to describe how do we execute a correct sentence in such a way that we respect the semantics. And that's important. We have to respect the semantics. The execution of the sentence has to uh, result in an correct uh, uh, execution of the semantics for the sentence. And this is important, uh, of course, for the software designer and the language designer. Um, the software designer has to be uh, uh, aware of what is going to happen when we execute a particular sentence in the programming language. <laughs> 